there is gross ignorance in the body of Christ when it comes to the issue of dreams, sleep paralysis, nightmares, altars, the ministry of angels, interaction between the spirit world and the physical world. Today, I want to quickly talk to you about the truth or the mystery behind sleep paralysis, dreams, and nightmares. Most people love to demonize things that they don't understand, regardless of what the Bible says about those things. If they don't understand something, they will label it, they will call it demonic. Hence, the enemy always thrives in the ignorance of believers because the enemy has no power over a firmer believer in Christ. But what gives him power is ignorance. No wonder why Hosea says, my people die because they lack knowledge. Not that they don't pray. They pray, but they still die because they lack knowledge. When it comes to spiritual matters, you only travel to the direction of what you know. What you know empowers you. You cannot be empowered by something that you don't know. So let's break it down. We have dreams. What is a dream? A dream is the greatest form of revelation. We see it in the book of Numbers chapter 12, verses 6, where the Lord said, If there is a prophet among you, I, the Lord, will make myself known unto him in a dream. The Bible says in the book of Job chapter 33, and you read verses 14 and 15, God speaks to every man once year twice, but man perceiveth it not. Verse 15 says, in a dream, when deep sleep falleth upon men in the slumberings of the bed, God opens the ears of men and seals their instructions. So we know that God speaks through dreams. But I want to say something before I get to sleep paralysis about dreams. A lot of people will wonder, is this dream from God or is this dream from the devil? Now, one thing the devil does not have power for or towards is to make you dream. The devil cannot give you a dream. From the book of Revelation, going back to the book of Genesis, from the book of Genesis, going forward to the book of Revelation, you have never seen any person who dreamed and the dream was from the devil. And that's because this is a realm he cannot fathom. God exists, lives in a realm called the realm of eternity. Eternity means past, present, future, all existing in the now. While it's you and I are in the realm of time. So there is past, there is present, and there is future. You cannot go to yesterday. You cannot go to tomorrow. You are trapped in today. You are trapped in the present. But when it comes to God, it is not like that. So this is the realm of God where time does not have power, where time does not have control. So that realm, the devil does not have power to fathom it. And it is in that realm that we dream meaning the devil does not have power to fathom your dreams. I'll break it down again. Dreams are the only way that one can go to the past, the future, while it's in the present. That's why you are able to dream yourself as a baby, yet you are an adult. You are able to see yourself as an adult, yet you are still a young person. Why? Because when it comes to dream, time has no power. The concept of time and distance does not exist there. That's the realm of God. That's why God used it as a code to give his servants messages. Because the enemy will sit or stand in the realms of the spirit, in the celestial realm, wait for an angel that is coming down with an answer and fight that angel and there will be a delay. But when it comes to dreams now, God will not release an angel, so to say. God will just speak direct to that person. Hence, interpretation is the most important thing. 
One would say, but I dreamt and I was being beaten by a snake. I dreamt I was being chased by dogs. Are you saying that dream is from God? Yes. I mean, how can the devil attack you and show you in a dream that he's attacking you? It doesn't make sense, right? How can somebody bewitch you and the devil who's using that person to bewitch you show you the dream? How were you able to pick it up? It means, yes, they were doing it. But because God is a faithful God, he had to reveal what is hidden to the eye of the flesh to you in a dream so that when you wake up, you will know what to do with what you sow. That's why the Bible says it is not God who's not speaking. It's man who's unable to interpret what God is saying. So it is very, very important for you to understand that whenever God shows you something, it's because you have the ability to change it, to minimize it, or to stop it. Because in the spirit, you only have authority over what you are able to see. God reveals to redeem. So you are either part of the problem or part of the solution. But then again, on the other hand, there is what we call nightmare. So the difference between a nightmare and a dream is that in most cases, you will dream something horrible or see something not nice, but there will be serenity in the midst of that confusion, meaning there will be peace. Not that you are not troubled, because peace does not mean absence of trouble, but peace simply means serenity in the midst of trouble. But when it comes to a nightmare, every time you wake up from a nightmare, you will wake up surrounded by fear. And remember, God has not given us the spirit of fear. So it means what the enemy uses to duplicate dreams, to attack people's spirits, is nightmare, or what we call nightmare. Everybody knows what the word night means, but not everybody knows what the word mayor means. So the word mayor is actually a mythological term that means gobly. Gobly is a demon, and most people call it incubus or succubus spirits, right? This is a demon that visits people only at night when people are sleeping. You see, when it comes to this, God is not involved. This is how the enemy attacks people. On the other hand, we have sleep paralysis. Let's break it down and let's hear what the Bible says about sleep paralysis because it's one thing to dream. It's another thing to have a vision. It's one thing to have a nightmare and it's another thing to have sleep paralysis. What is sleep paralysis? Now, whenever we are talking about sleep paralysis, we are talking about a temporary inability to move or to even speak while sleeping or while falling asleep. So that moment where you're not able to move your body or to even utter a word while you are sleeping or falling asleep, that's what it's called sleep paralysis. But what most people don't know about this sleep paralysis, right, is that it is not demonic. I know you are shocked, and I'll show you in the Bible. That's why the more you know, the more you function. The less you know, the less you function. So let's start here. You are a spirit man, meaning you're a spirit being, possessing a soul, living in the body. So you are in the body, but you're not the body. Pay attention to what I'm saying. You are in the body, but you are not the body. You are a spirit man. And every time you sleep, the flesh rests, meaning the flesh swinges off. And what comes alive, what starts to be active, is your spirit man. Most people don't know that by the time they turn 60 years, if they've been sleeping eight hours a day, they will have spent 20 years in dreams or 20 years in the spirit, so to say. And 20 years 
is too much and is too long for God not to speak to you, for God not to direct you, for you not to tap into dimensions. So sleep paralysis, right, is what we call or what the Bible will call out-of-body experience. When you are having that moment where you are not able to move or to say a word, that time, right at that moment, is because your spirit either is struggling to come out, to leave your body, or rather, your flesh is fighting your spirit. Some people are like, but where, where is it in the Bible? So many people in the Bible have had, or rather had, out-of-body experience. I want us to look at what Paul is saying in the book of 2 Corinthians, and we read chapter 12, verses 1 to 4. It is not expedient for me doubtless to glory. Right, he is talking about him boosting. I will come to visions and revelations of the Lord. Verse 2, I knew a man in Christ above 14 years ago. Whether in the body, I cannot tell. Or whether out of the body, I cannot tell. God knoweth. Do you see that now? He's talking about whether in the body or out of the body. Such an one caught up in the what? Third heaven. So he's saying this happened, but I'm not sure if it was in the body or out of the body. Verse 3 says, and I knew such a man, whether in the body or out of the body. I cannot tell. God know it. He says it again in verse 3. Look at verse 4. How that he was caught up into paradise and had unspeakable words, which it is not lawful for a man to utter. So Paul here is talking about an experience. And he cannot tell if it was out of the body or whether in the body. Meaning we do have people who will experience out of the body moments or rather have out of the body experiences. So people will believe Paul in his times. Some believe it's Paul talking and he's talking about himself. And of course, there are those who believe Paul is talking about somebody else. But the truth of the matter is when you read verses 1, you then realize he's talking about himself. So he knows that there is such a thing called out-of-body experience. So he was caught up in paradise, in the third heaven. So there are people who don't even believe this third heaven, but you read it in the Bible. So he was caught up there, right? So he says whether in the body or out of the body. And not only him. When John wrote the book of Revelation, he didn't write it while he was 100% in the flesh. Revelation chapter 1, verses 9. He says, I, John, whom also am your brother and companion in tribulation and in the kingdom and in patience of Jesus Christ, was in the isle that is called Patmos for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. Verse 10 will blow your mind. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day and had behind me a great voice. So he was in the spirit and had behind him a great voice. As of a what? Of a trumpet saying, I am Alpha and Omega. So when he had this, he was in the spirit. What is that out of body experience? So he is in the island of Patmos. But at the same time, he says, I was in the spirit on the day of the Lord. And he had the voice, not when he was in the flesh, but he had the voice while he was in the spirit. Now, the same John who's in the spirit, I want you to understand that there are dimensions in the spirit. In chapter 4 of Revelation, he says something. Remember, he's in the spirit. So the whole book of Revelation, when John wrote it, remember he wrote it while he was in the spirit. And if you study, you realize that when he wrote it, he was actually blind because they tried to kill him, right? They tried to even take out his eyes. They tried to boil him, and the man could not die. And John, the disciple, was actually nicknamed the divine because they tried so many times to kill him, and the man could not die. And that is because him to die, it was impossible 
until Mary dies. One will say, but what do you mean? Remember when Jesus was to be crucified or was about to be crucified, he looked at John and said, behold your mother, mother, behold your son. So he gave John a responsibility to look after his mother. So John cannot die as long as Mary is still alive. That's why it was impossible to kill the man, and they nicknamed him the divine. In chapter 4, he says, after this, I looked and behold, a door was open in heaven. He's in the spirit. Wallace is in the spirit. He's looking and a door is open in heaven. In the spirit. So in the spirit, there are dimensions. That's why prophets who are deep will say nobody can enter a dimension unless a spirit invite that person because it takes a spirit to invite a spirit to a dimension. After this, I looked and behold, a door was opened in heaven. And the first voice which I heard was as it were of a trumpet talking with me. Remember, we know the voice that he heard that was like a trumpet. So he says the same voice he heard. Now, which said, come up hither. The same voice that now said, look, write what I'm about to show you. When he looked up, he saw the heavens open. A gate was open. And the same voice says, come up hither. So in the spirit, they are what? They are dimensions. He says, come up hither, and I will show thee things which must be hereafter. So we see him moving from one dimension to another dimension in the spirit. But if you were to ask me, where was John's body? In the island of Patmos. But how did John write Revelation? He was in the spirit. And what do you call that out-of-body experience? But there are those who are not matured enough to experience it on a daylight, on a normal day, right? But there are then those who are matured that they can literally be in a place and boom, they go. They are in the spirit. But there are those then that God will wait until you are to put or you are about to put your flesh to rest and right there. That's why sleep paralysis in the spirit are actually called gateways to realms. That's why it is my prayer that you don't just hear what I'm saying, but read the word of God, understand the word of God for yourself. Brothers and sisters, we are not earthly beings with spiritual experience. We are spiritual beings with earthly experience. My prayer is that you will hear this because this is so deep. Hence, you find psychics and all these people who don't even believe in God, fathoming dimensions and realms. And that's because they've understood what you have demonized. The devil can't create anything. He does not have the ability to. But what he does is he copies what God does and he puts his nature in it, right? So it is important for you to understand this teaching. So before you conclude and before you jump into conclusion and find yourself in confusion, hear what the Bible is saying and hear what I'm saying here, right? Learn something today. Learn, be humble enough to learn something here today, okay? So we see John, but John is not the only one. My favorite man in, in terms of, you know, out-of-body experience was Ezekiel. When you read the Bible, let's go there. <laughs> Ezekiel chapter 8, verse 3. And he put forth the form of an hand and took me by a lock of my head. I, uh, another version says he put me by the collar. Do you see that now? And the spirit lifted me up between the earth and the heaven. Of course, he's not talking about his flesh being lifted up. He's talking about his spirit being lifted up, right? And brought me in the visions of God to Jerusalem, to the door of the inner gate that looked toward the north. Where was the seat of the image of jealousy, which provoketh to jealousy? Do you see that now? He is pulled up by the spirit of God. And what is God pulling out of the man? His spirit. But I want you to understand that here he had matured. So it was easy for his spirit to go. Because now he was in chapter 8. But let me show you when he experienced this for the first time or in the early stages of sleep paralysis, what happened to him. Ezekiel chapter 3. And I will read verse 14. So the spirit lifted me up and took me away 
out-of-body experience. And I went in bitterness. Another vision says, and there was bitterness in my body. There was bitterness in my spirit. In the heat of my spirit. He says, there was bitterness in the heat of my spirit. Ah, yeah. But the hand of the Lord was strong upon me. Now, what you are experiencing every time you are having sleep paralysis is bitterness in your spirit. It's bitterness, some of you, in your body. It is not a comfortable moment. And that is because that is a doorway to the realms and spiritual realities that a mind or rather a physical body cannot fathom. And of course, you have people who practice, I think they call it astral projection or something, where they try to go out and just venture into realms and they travel or something like that. Some they call it astral travel, something like that, right? Um, that is a different practice altogether. We don't do that as believers because the answers we are looking for are not there. The answers we are looking for are in the word. The answers we are looking for, the Holy Ghost is the one that teaches us, that guides us. However, there are truths that God will want to reveal to us as his people, as his children, that he has to call us where he is. We have to tap in the realm. We are spirit beings, brothers and sisters. You will read the book of Ezekiel chapter 37 and be excited that the man spoke to dry bones. But the truth of the matter is, when he spoke to dry bones, he was not physically in the valley. His body was somewhere. And when he spoke to the dry bones, the man was having out-of-body experience. Are you telling me that these experiences, they ended with Paul, with Ezekiel, even Isaiah had them, as a matter of fact. Isaiah had them in the Bible. That's Verse 4 declares, morning after morning, he awakens my ear. When it comes to the prophetic and when it comes to God, God does not open your spiritual ears. He awakens them. And Isaiah understood this better. So sleep paralysis are a gateway to other realities. I mean, you are a born again child of God. Why will you be attacked by the enemy every night? You are giving credit to the devil. And some of you, it's your opportunity to even interact with the angels. But because the flesh is limited, but the spirit is unlimited, then you have to, just like Ezekiel, be pulled out of your body. That's why when you come back, most of the things, they sound so real. One will say, but I want to shout, Jesus, I'm not able. I want to do this. I'm not able. I told you there's a difference between nightmare, sleep paralysis, and dreams, right? When it comes to sleep paralysis, you can even control it. You can even stop it. And that will prove to you how real what I'm talking to you about is. You can control it. Honestly, Apostle, how do I control it? In a sense of you can stop it from happening. Right that moment when you feel like you're unable to move because your mind is working, right? Remember. Hence, you are able to feel and see that you are not able to talk or even say a word. You can stop it from happening. How do you stop it? 
you stop it by working on your breathing techniques. You inhale, right, deeply, and then you exhale very slow. The more oxygen on your brain, the more alive you become. So every time it happens, try this, you will then realize that it is not as crazy as maybe one would have thought it is. So it is just your spirit living, and it doesn't happen to everyone. And remember, where God is, there is peace. And where the enemy has an upper hand, there is fear. And that can always be your way of judging, your way of testing. If this was from God or this was from the devil. And I wish I could talk to you now about how do you know that you are about, or rather, how do you channel your spirit for that? How do you channel your spirit? Because you can't. spirit in a sense of you can position your spirit just as one can induce visions one can actually position let me put it the way it should be position their spirit position themselves to be called out of their body the first time I had an encounter with the Lord it was an out-of-body experience. I was very young, I was 14 years old, and those that read my book, How to See Angels, you might have read about it. And most of you who have been listening to me for some time, you might have had me talk about that. It was an out-of-body experience when I encountered the Lord. So these things are real, and these things are tangible. And I pray that next time, if God gives us the opportunity, which he will, I'll come back and talk about how to position your spirit or how to position yourself. And you too, you will say, whether in the flesh or in the body, I do not know. But I know of a sister. I know of a brother who was caught up. Whether you were caught up in the seventh heaven or sixth, we don't know. But you'll be able to say that too. And I believe this will bless you mightily. Comment for part two.